Yo, you struggling with those hi-hats? Let's get those rolls going. What's going on people, it's John the Dreamer, just here to give you a quick hi-hat roll tutorial. You know, for the last 20 years and so on, these have been so popular and they're still going on to this day. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you a few ways of how I do my hi-hat rolls, maybe even make some presets so you can save them and save some time. Workflow is key. Let's get into the video. So when it comes to making your hi-hats or your hi-hat rolls, what you want to do is make sure you find a hi-hat that you like and something that you can create some movement with and make it sound interesting basically. So what I always do is instead of putting them within the drum rack, I like to put them on their own individual MIDI track and I'll show you some of the benefits of that. But before we do that, let's walk through the process. So what I would do is right click, click on insert MIDI track, click on that and you get a brand new MIDI track. And you go through some of your hi-hat sounds. So I've got some stuff here. We're gonna choose this one here, blunt hi-hat. I'm gonna drag it down to here on the MIDI track where it says drop instrument or sample. So you drag it here. And now we can actually listen to it. We can audition it. So if I play my MIDI keyboard, you can see we've got a hi-hat. And we're gonna make a new MIDI clip. Okay, so here's our MIDI clip. Now let me play you what I've already got. I've got a little basic atmosphere patch and an 808. So I'll play it. So a pretty simple pattern, something with a few glides in it, um, kind of spooky sounds. Um, some people might want to start with a clap and have some sort of rhythm to get going, but me, I like to start with the hi-hats. I like to start with the pace, but depends on feeling. One day I might do this, one day I might do that. So what I would do is, I'd press B, get my pencil up, and I'd look for C3. C3 is middle C, and that's where the sound is going to sound exactly how it should be. And I've clicked in on the 16th note. We don't want to do that. We want to make sure our quantize is on the 8th note setting, which is here. So I'm going to press B. And instead of sitting here and clicking them in, I'm just going to press Command D. If you're on Windows, I'm guessing Control D. Duplicate loop. And we're going to have a simple hi hat pattern. Anybody can do that. If you're on FL, obviously you just press fill two steps or whatever one it is. But if we want to get some rolls going, what I always do is it's all about changing the quantized note um, setting. So you go through your 16th notes, your 13th notes, and you start adding some stuff. So in a button, I just press B and I'll find places where I want to do my interesting in hats. Have some rolls. So maybe here, I'll just go in. Some of the benefits of using a MIDI track on its own is you can have your pitch stuff. If you're using a drum rack, you're just gonna get the one sound on one straight roll of a MIDI. But if you do on its own MIDI track, you can now separate things and add some additional tones and stuff. So that's how I choose here. I might go in here and have some of this. If you just noticed, you'll hear that the sound kind of cuts off. We don't want that. So what we're going to need to do is go back into the simpler, open the release up, and that's going to sound a lot better. Okay. So when I'm doing these wider ones, I'll go back to the bigger grid. Maybe just keep that pattern. Change some of the pitches. We could do some triplet notes. Um, triplets is where we're going to do. If we press right click and go into triplet grid and set it to maybe eighth notes, you can see we're going to get that sort of triplet sound. So we can hear it. Just going to put it on the actual. Yeah. For 
for those of you who can't function without listening to the clap or the snare, here we go, let's have a listen. That's one option, you know, you could sit here and you can draw in just different mini notes. Another way you can do things is to build your own presets. So, you know, those days where you don't feel like making beats and you just want to chill and sit around, what you can do is just open up MIDI tracks and just make MIDI files of hats. So if I go down to here, I've started to build my own. So when I'm feeling a bit lazy or find a different flavor, I go into my little folder here and I've got folders join the Juma hi-hat patterns and any of these, I can just drag out onto my MIDI track. And now it's an auditioning process. It's not just, oh, let's make a good one. And what you might find is there's parts of ones you like. So I quite like the ending of this one, but I don't like the start. So I might mix and match between them and um, just see what we get. If you want to start making your own presets, what you need to do is start just having MIDI tracks, rename them. So I've got up to 12, so I might call this one Hi-Hat 13. After you've renamed it, what you want to do is just right click on the MIDI clip again and press export MIDI clip. And then you can export it into the same folder, which you'll see on here. So I'm going to call this Hat 13. And technically that should update over here. There we go, Hat MIDI. And now we could drag that one into here, use it in another session. We're building up a bank again, very similar to the airways. So yeah, that's a really quick tutorial. Uh, this is John Ajima from johnajima.uk. Until next time.